Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Andy and in today's video we're going to look at a very important topic when working with data and that is the absence of data. Missing data is probably one of the most commonly faced issues when working with real world data sets and that data can be missing for a multitude of reasons including sensor failure, human error and poor data management. Missing data can range from a single point to an entire column or feature being missing. And many machine learning algorithms that we use today require the data to be as complete as possible when carrying out the training process. It is therefore essential to identify and understand the extent of that missing data within a data set. There are of course exceptions to this where some machine learning models such as Random Forest can handle that missing data as part of the algorithm. Today's video is going to focus on a very simple to use but very powerful library called MissingNo. And we can use MissingNo to evaluate the extent of the missingness within a data set and how each of those missing values correlate with each other. And we will do this through looking at four key plots. The bar plot, the matrix plot, the dendrogram and the heat map. We will now go over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can create these. Here we are in our Jupyter Notebook. If you do not have the Missing Null library installed, you can install it without leaving the Jupyter Notebook. And this can be done by typing exclamation mark followed by pip install missing null. Jupyter will then install the library, but if you already have it installed, you will see a message similar to this one. So the first step in our process is to import the libraries that we're going to use. And for this tutorial, we're going to be working with pandas for loading and storing our data and the Missing Null library for visualizing data completeness. And the data set that we are going to use is a subset of the publicly available data set from the machine learning competition that was run by Zeke and Force 2020. And the objective of this competition was to predict lithology from existing labeled data. And that original data set contains around about 118 wells from the Norwegian North Sea. So we are working with a subset of that of several wells. Before we move on to using the missing no library, there are a few features within the pandas library that can give us an initial insight into how much data is actually missing. And the first is using the dot describe method. And this returns a table containing summary statistics about the data frame, such as the mean, maximum and minimum values. At the top of the table, there is a row called count. And in this example, we can see that we have varying counts for each of the features within the data frame. And this provides an initial indication that not all values are present within our data. We can take this one step further and use the dot info method. And this will return back a summary of the data frame as well as the count of the non-null values. We can see that when we run this cell, we have a more concise summary of the state of the data and the extent of the data missing them. So another quick method that we can use is df.isna. We can then append .sum to this function and then we get a summary table of the total count of null values within each of the columns of the data frame. So from this summary we can see that we have a number of columns, namely well, depth underscore md, group, gr and lithofascies where there are no nulls. However, all other columns have some degree of missing values. So let's move on to the missing null library. So within the missing null library, there are four main types of plots for visualizing data completeness. The bar plot, the matrix plot, the heat map, and the dendrogram. Each of these plots has its own advantages for identifying missing data. So let's take a look at each of these in turn. The first one we will look at is the bar plot and it can be generated by simply calling msno.bar and then passing in the data frame, a df. And this provides a simple plot where each bar represents a column within the data frame. The height of the bar indicates how complete that column is and how many non-null values are present. So when we run this, we can see that on the left hand side of the plot, the y-axis scale ranges from zero to one where one represents 100% data completeness. If the bar is less than this, it indicates that we have missing values within that column. On the right hand side of the plot, the scale is measured in index values, with the top right representing the maximum number of rows within the data frame. Along the top of the plot, there are a series of numbers that represent the total count of the non-null values within that column. In this example, we can see that a number of columns, DTS, DECAL, and RSHA, have a large amount of missing values. Other columns such as well, depth underscore MD, and GR are complete and have the maximum number of values as we saw earlier. 
The next plot we will look at is the matrix plot. And this is a great tool if you're working with depth related data or time series data. And we can generate this matrix plot by calling upon msno.matrix passing in df. It provides a color fill for each column. When data is present, the plot is shaded in gray or the color of your choice. And when it is absent, the row values are displayed in white. As seen in the resulting plot, the columns DTS, DCAL and R SHA show large portions of missing data. And this was identified in the bar plot, but the added benefit of having the matrix plot is you can view how that missing data is distributed within the data frame. On the right hand side of the plot is a spark line that ranges from zero on the left to the total number of columns in the data frame on the right. When a row has a value in each column, the line will be at the maximum right position. As missing values start to decrease within that row, the line will then move towards the left. So the next plot we're going to look at is the heat map, and that is used to identify correlations of the nullity between each of the different columns. In other words, it can be used to identify if there is a relationship in the presence of null values between one variable and another. And the heat map can be generated by the following code, msno.heatmap and then passing in df. Values close to positive 1 indicate that the presence of null values in one column is positively correlated with the presence of null values in another column. And when those values are close to negative 1, it indicates that the presence of null values in one column is anti-correlated with the presence of null values in another. In other words, when null values are present in one column, there are data values present in the other column, and vice versa. And values close to zero indicate that there is no or little relationship between the presence of null values in one column compared to another. If we take a look at the DRHO or delta rho curve, its absence is highly correlated with the missing values in the RHOB, NFI and PEF curve. And this is what we would expect as all these measurements uh, originate from the same logging tool. And the final plot that we will look at is the dendrogram. And we can generate this by calling upon msno.dendrogram and then passing in the data frame. The dendrogram plot provides a tree-like graph that is generated through hierarchical clustering and groups together columns that have strong correlations and nullity. If a number of columns are grouped together at level zero, then the presence of nulls in one of those columns is directly related to the presence or absence of nulls in the other columns. The more separated the columns in the tree, the less likely the null values can be correlated between the columns. So in the plot here, we can see that we have two distinct groups. The first is on the right side. All of these have a high degree of null values. The second is on the left with the remainder of the columns which are more complete. So Lifofashi's GR group well and depth underscore MD are all grouped together at zero, indicating that they are complete. Our depth, Z lock and X lock and Y lock are grouped together at close to zero, whereas our med is in the same larger branch, suggesting that some of the missing values present within that column can be correlated with these four columns. These four plots can provide a wealth of information about the data completeness. We can see where the data values are missing using the matrix plot. We can also see how these missing values correlate with other values within the data set and whether that data is missing and positively correlated with that data or it is anti-correlated where we have some data in one curve but not in another. Once the missing values have been identified and their underlying causes understood, we can then move on to dealing with the missing values. And measures for dealing with these values can range from simple case deletion where we delete the entire row if one of the values is missing. We can also look at filling in with the mean or by imputing with other values such as fill forward or fill backwards. We can also use machine learning to impute the data prior to using it for its main task. If you want to see how to visualize data using matplotlib and python then be sure to check these videos out here. But wait don't click off this video just yet. If you've enjoyed this content be sure to hit that like button and if you want to see more content from this channel be sure to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching and until next time bye for now.